Amen. Humbled and honored to be here this morning. As we start, I'd like you to join me in a special prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in adoration and praise for all that you are and all that you do for each of us. We are humbled by the way you love us, provide for us, teach us, forgive us as we go about our each and every day. We're thankful for the opportunity this morning to come together as brothers and sisters, as family unified in spirit, joined in one accord and one purpose. May your words, your will, and your manifested presence be felt mightily, Lord. We beckon you, Father, to send forth power, send forth truth, send forth majesty into the river this morning. As we come to worship and praise in memory of the men and women that gave their all, their very lives, may we remember the sacrifices made for you and for each of us. In your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Right now, if we turned out every light in here, it'd be totally dark. You couldn't see a single thing. And if somebody lit one match, one candle, suddenly you would see almost the entire room. So can you imagine what it's like to know about that light but not utilize it? How fast does the Lord's light come in and be with you in those times of distress, those times that you're really hurting inside? I want you to think about that as I give you a little bit of history. For the past 242 years, we have been the United States of America because our independence was declared in 1776. In that century, in the 17, late 1700s, the formation of the Continental Army and the Continental Navy was established. From there, the Marines became another branch of our armed forces in 1834. Then came the Coast Guard in 1915, the next addition was the Army Air Corps and finally the U.S. Air Force in 1947. Each man and woman that served in the armed forces began their enlistment with this statement. I remember making this statement 51 years ago. I, Michael Decker, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the offices, officers appointed over me according to regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me, God. Amen. Those last words, those last four words, have never changed. And I want you to think about that. There's actually an act called Title 10 U.S. Code. It was originally done in 1789, and that same statement is still here today. No person ever goes to war and comes back unaffected or unchanged. Today, here we are, 2018. 2018. The suicide rate for veterans is 22 men or women die every single day every single day, over 8,000 suicides. And here we are in 2018. 65% of these suicides are taking place with men and women over the age of 50. But one of the things that's happened in the last three years is that suicide rate of being higher and higher is going lower and lower, younger and younger. We don't have to look back far to see the change in our culture regarding our military. In World War I and World War II, the returnees were greeted and celebrated and cheered. The veterans of Korea were barely even acknowledged. The veterans of Vietnam were disregarded, shamed, spit on, ridiculed, and protested violently. We must now think back to those final words spoken in that oath of enlistment. So help me God. You know, some of us in this room there's not a lot of us, but there's a few of us in our room, in this room today, that are around 70 years old. I'm proud to be one of those. I remember what it was like when I came back. 
Remember when I got wounded the first time and I stayed in country? I remembered when I got wounded the second time and I got shipped out of Da Nang. They medevac me from uh, Freedom Mountain into Da Nang. Uh, got ready to get on a C-140 to be medevac to U.S. Naval Hospital in Guam. A, uh, while I was ready to go, the flight never came in, never came in. And the reason it didn't come in is because a 210 military rocket had been fired into the ammunition dump. And for four and a half days, that ammunition dump cooked off. So myself and 113 other guys laid out on the tarmac, and we laid there and watched and listened to the explosions. And I remember when that finally ended, when that finally cooked off, and I remember that C-140 coming in. I remember the feeling in my heart. I remember as they loaded us on stretchers on that plane, and as we uh, took that nine-hour flight into Guam, and I remember getting carried off that plane and carried into the U.S. Naval Hospital, and I saw all my brothers there with me. We remember those things today like they were yesterday. One of the reasons that we see that suicide rate so high is because of PTSD. PTSD is so strong that I'm telling you for sure that you can smell that smell, you can hear that sound, you can, you can feel that feeling, and it's real. Some real hard times a year are, are like in that, when we're celebrating Independence Day, I promise you a lot of veterans get out of town because some of the sounds that go off make us do some strange things. In that same circumstance come the holidays, the suicide rate from October 15th to January 15th is the highest ever. So what we need to think about and what we need to realize is where do we go to change that situation and where, where do we go to truly, truly hear the word of God and do something with it. Let's think about this. Hang on just a second. I'm not one of these young guys that knows how to do all this. In the Psalm of David, in the 23rd Psalm, we think about this. I'm going to uh, read this to you in the American Standard Vision. Jehovah is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. He guideth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. No evil. Why? Because his word says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So no matter what I've gone through, no matter what I've experienced, no matter what I've seen, no matter the memories that are still locked in here, they transitioned a long time ago when that light from the Lord changed the darkness that was inside me. See, I understand darkness. I understand darkness from depression, and I understand darkness from uh, violence, but I also understand darkness from being in darkness. I want you to think about darkness this morning for a moment. Imagine suddenly you're away from everybody, every human being, and somebody puts you in a concrete box and they lock the door and they don't unlock the door for 13 months and 26 days. I want you to think about that. I'm going to tell you a little story about that later. As we go on in his word, though, it, it says, The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And thou hast anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of of Jehovah, my Lord, forever. See, I, I realize what it's like to be locked up I, in, in, the, in that dark situation. I realize what it's like to be locked up in here or locked up in here. And the reason so many men and women are still going through that PTSD experience is because most of them nationwide in the veterans' hospitals, they're going in there, and, and the correction for that is here, let's take this pill and this pill and that pill and that pill and this medication and that medication. And don't take a little bit, take a lot. And I promise you won't do those things that you do when you're not taking the medication. But there's an amazing thing there, and that amazing thing is this, that's not the answer. 
See, it's the reason why when we look in the Word and in Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with your whole heart and in a lot on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your pathway straight. So when I can take that realm of who I was and where I've been and suddenly take that whole realm and say, Lord, I trust you with my whole heart. Then what happens is because I trusted him, he delivers, he gives me deliverance. Yes. He gives me deliverance and he gives me forgiveness. I promise you, and I'm, I'm going to make this statement, and it's a pragmatic statement. There is nobody in this room or nobody listening at home or wherever they may be. There's not one person that's done as much evil stuff as I've done has been so far in darkness. But no matter I've gone that far in darkness and gone through all those experiences in war, God forgave me and he cleaned my slate clean. See, it, it's, and it's an amazing thing to have come from that and be able to look back in that. One of the amazing things about the way we, those of us that came back from Vietnam, one of the amazing things about the way we were treated when we come back, most people don't understand that Almost 70% of all the men and women that came back from Vietnam spent time in jail and prison. 70%. In somewhere in the realm of 85 to 88% had a problem with drugs and alcohol because they tried to deal with what they had been through and been with. And in the same circumstance, um, a lot of you know that uh, God opened up a door of over 20 years ago when I started a ministry called Beyond the Walls and I go back into jails and prisons all over the United States and some internationally and when I walk in there one of my first statements to those men and women when I'm talking to them in prison is you need to find your freedom here freedom's not out there freedom's in here because it's in here because it's in here and when you find that final freedom then you're released you're released to go and do what God calls you to do Every man, woman, and child in this room today that's here right now, every single one of you have a calling on your life. And don't let circumstance or situation put you in a frame of mind and frame of reference that you say, well, I just don't know how to get started. I really don't have the ability. I don't have the knowledge. don't have the training. That's a lie from the pit of hell. See, because... God reached inside me and no matter how I grew up and, and everything that had gone in, on in my life I not only got for, forgiveness he gave me healing so all those times when I was a little boy when, when that stepdad locked me up into a pump house and when that every morning when unlocked and let work me for 10 or 12 hours and then locked me back up in that pump house he healed all that he healed all that time that I spent in the penitentiary yeah, spent some time in penitentiary, 26 years and 14 days. And I know when I go back inside a prison, I'm going to share with those men and women what it's like to be on the other side, what it's like to take that freedom from here and take it on the outside, to take that healing from here and take it on the inside so that you may go out and do something. Yeah. Do something with your life. There's some key words in the kingdom that we must go to, and I want to... I want you to think about these words, majesty, power, fire, peace, and love. If I gave you my whole testimony, we'd be here until tomorrow, so I'm not going to do that. Everybody's going, yeah, because there's football this afternoon. <laughs> but what we have to understand is this, that freedom and that gift comes from the Lord in a very, very special way. And what, the first thing we have to do is we've got to kneel down, not only physically, but we have to kneel down emotionally. We have to lay it before his feet. And when we lay it before his feet, something begins to happen. And the first thing we realize is there's something, no matter what that dark is, the light starts to shine, and suddenly that peace that surpasses all understanding begins to happen. And no matter the test of the trial that took place, no matter the tribulation that took place, the testimony is always the same. Because whatever he carries us through is what he's carrying us to. So we take those life experiences that we need to be healed from. We take those life experiences that we need to change in our own individual lives 
And when he heals us, he allows us to take what we've gone through and go heal somebody else. Hands that used to do something violently suddenly open up. The most amazing thing I ever saw, he laid before me. After all the things that had gone through in my life, I got a phone call one night. I'd been out of the penitentiary 11 days. And a man called me and said, my little boy is 14 months old in Northwest Texas Hospital, and they just told me that he won't make it till morning. They've done everything they can, and there's nothing else they can do. A friend of mine told, told me that you'd come and pray for him. What an amazing thing I saw. I saw this little baby in this little crib, gasping for air, just <laughs> couldn't breathe. And I saw this, this man and this woman, this father and this mother, and we began to pray. And we kept on praying. And we believed. And then we heard this sound. That little boy is 22 years old today. That's not me. It wasn't me. Totally the Lord. And that's why when we think of him, I'll read this to you. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say, Jehovah, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover thee with his pinions, and under his wings shall thou take refuge. His truth is a shield and a buckler, and thou shalt not be afraid, for by the terror of night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We begin to understand that no matter what has come against us, I don't care if we're going like, man, what am I going to do about groceries? And what am I going to do about that house payment and car payment? And what am I going to do about this and do about that? The first thing we got to do is we got to turn away from that situation and we got to turn toward Him. His peace begins to change something in our heart and my mind in the way that we do things. And he does it in a way that is so beautiful and so loving. It is amazing to see, and I, I have watched transformations of people. And one of the transformations that's going to happen here today is today for the first time, I've been praying about this all week and fasting. Today for the first time when we have an altar call after the service, there will be more people up here than ever before. Because the message God wants you to hear this morning is, you're released in Jesus' name. You no longer have to sit there on what the circumstances you're going through and go through, and man, I'm sick and I need prayer. I, I need some finances and I need prayer. My family needs this and I need prayer. And list and the list and the list goes on. Every single one of you that has a need should be up here at the end of the service laying it before the throne and allowing an elder or a pastor or one of the, the, the lay uh, prayer leaders and so forth to be here and praying for you because I'm telling you things change instantly instantly I look in this, in this room right now and, and I see several dozen of you that I know that have gone through major circumstances in the last few months and your life's different today and it wasn't about something that you did. It was about exactly what he did. Yeah. And truly, when we lay it as a throne, the manifested presence of the Holy Spirit comes in an amazing way, an amazing power, an amazing circumstance. Continuing in uh, Psalm 91, I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
See, basically what we're thinking about, I want you to listen to this statement and put your name at the beginning of it. I must begin this study by going deep inside the chambers of my own heart, soul, and spirit. There, in that place, shielded, walled in, and secret place that few others have ever been allowed to see or hear. There, in the mire of unforgiveness, depression, turmoil, abuse, and emotional chaos are those stagnant waters which have constantly holded myself back, and they've drowned what God intended for victory. See, until we... Because God is so omnipotent, is such an amazing Father, He allows us the privilege, and He tells us, if you'll just open that door, I'll do this for you. He doesn't come down and command you to open that door. He's not that type of Abba Father. He wants you to open that door, and when that stagnant water runs out and He fills you with that living water, something majestic happens. It's in his majesty, it's in his presence, it's in his love, and it's in his will to do that for you, every single one of you. There are things that have happened here in this body over the last two to three years that have made major difference, major differences in your lives. And some of those things are, are catastrophic when they take place. But I'm telling you that when you have the faith and you have the belief and you continue to walk in that righteousness, there's a peace that's infectious, absolutely infectious. I'm going to have uh, my brother play a short video, and this is about two, about two minutes, about one minute and 58 seconds or something like that. And I want you to listen to what's being said. And then I'm going to tell you a little story about what's being said after it's done. I didn't give him a lot of notice. Just taking a moment to touch base and share some life with you all. As many of you know, um, I am battling stage four cancer again. And this time it has returned with a vengeance. It has overtaken the abdominal cavity and attacked my bones. And man's medicine is not there for a cure or for an extension of life. And we are truly trusting in God 100% right now. I am officially a hospice patient, which I want all of you to know is such a gift. This doesn't mean that uh, my death is imminent right around the corner. It uh, is giving me the opportunity to live pain-free, um, which um, means I get to enjoy my family um, and serve the Lord and experience the true joy that's available to us all despite the circumstances that are going on in our lives. Um, I just ask that you all join us in prayer and uh, standing that, um, that this part of life is lengthy, that uh, God knows God's timing is perfect and um, that it's a long time before he calls me home. And as we uh, go through each day, I'll, I hope to stop and share uh, little, little blessings of what the Lord is showing me and showing my family of who he is and what his love is all about. I pray for all of you and think of all of you often and uh, know that I'm here to be your prayer warriors also. And uh, thank you for um, walking this with me. Have a blessed day. There's a few of you in here that realized that that, that video um, was my wife, Robin. That was the day that we found out that her cancer, after 17 months of remission, had come back. She'd gone through 10 surgeries and 21 full sessions of chemo. Uh, done some amazing exploratory surgery at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. The amazing thing, as you saw, didn't change her faith, didn't change her belief, didn't change her reaching out to others. It didn't change her in any way. And so no matter what we're going through in the test or the trial or the tribulation, the testimony keeps going on. See, her legacy in that part 
was real important for me to share with you today on Veterans Day because I think about my, fed- my fellow brothers and my sisters that are my age and younger. I think about the ones that are getting ready to this week get on a plane or on a bus and go to San Diego or Jacksonville or Grand Rapids or someplace and begin their military career. They're going to say those words that I spoke to you earlier. I think about the men and women that are around this world, some still in Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran, still on the borders in Korea. Hundreds of thousands, millions of men and women, and they're in conflict, and yet they stand there day after day and hour after hour for you and me so that we can come here on Sunday. So that tomorrow we get up and we have a free world to go out and live in. See, one of the amazing things is I watched that journey because I was there right next to her side for a little over five years. I watched her lead over a hundred, over a hundred medical staff to the Lord as she was going through her process. I, uh, <laughs> I walked in the room in uh, Atlanta, Georgia and two Muslim doctors that she had witnessed to and I had witnessed to many, many days. I walked in and they were on their knees accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because though in the physical there was so much dark, in the spiritual there was so much light. And the amazing thing is, is that that legacy of what we've gone through is with a legacy that God wants you to take. And he wants you to take all of that pain and, and suffering that you went through. And he wants you, when he lays that person, that man or woman before you, and you know in your heart you're supposed to witness to them, you're supposed to reach out and say something, you're supposed to pray for them, you're supposed to touch them, you're supposed to help them, you're supposed to believe in them. He gives you that as part of your reward. And the amazing thing is, is I see her legacy still going on. And the same thing, I see Katie's legacy still going on because she, as she was going through all that stuff, as we go through all that stuff, God gives us opportunity to glorify him and to, to lessen the impact on somebody else. When we, when we look in his word, in Psalm 103, his word says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I can't think of a greater blessing that I've had in my life other than the 10 years that I got to spend with Robin. I can't think of anything greater than what I went through. And a lot of people don't understand this statement, but I'm thankful that I went to the penitentiary because in that penitentiary, he got my attention. See, because it was me that got stripped naked and put in that concentration box, that concrete box in Guanabo, Puerto Rico. And that's where God came and knocked on my door. Imagine that in a concrete box for 13 months and 26 days. The only thing in that concrete box was a hole in the floor. Never got to shower, never got to brush my teeth. I lost 115 pounds while I was in there. But four months into that, I heard that knock. And I remember a man a long time ago saying this, Michael, you need to know what Revelations 3.20 says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man will open that door, I'll come in and be with him. He came in. He set me free. That freedom I experience today. And when I go back in a jail or prison, it's amazing not only to see brothers and sisters that I've seen over the last 21 years of going back, but I see men and women with some kind of freedom, boy. It is so awesome to walk in a room like this and, and there would be three, four, five hundred people and praise and worship's going on and you're seeing some praise and worship going on. And those of you that have been in a jail or prison sitting and seen that freedom, man, it's infectious. Well, the awesome thing is that God expects us to be that kind of infectious and that kind of excited in here. Amen? Okay. When we look back in the book of James, his word in James 1 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. He goes on in verse 18 to say, in the exercise of his will, he brought us forth by the word of truth so that we would be the kind of first fruits among his creatures. As I grew up, my tree had no fruit. I don't even think my tree 
of life had he any leaves. And most of the limbs were broken. It is awesome today to know that my tree has fruit and it has leaves. And I, I can see that because I see that in my children and I see that in my grandchildren. My youngest grandchild is uh, five weeks old and my oldest is almost 18. I have another one on its way, so my quiver is getting full. Uh, believe it or not, they're making me younger. When we go on in his word, he says that this you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. The anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility receive the word implanted, which is able to save your soul. One of the greatest transitions of veterans is to come back because the vast majority, 90, 95% at least, have an anger problem. And anger is something that tears away at the very fiber and presence of God. There's no place for anger unless, it's, unless it is righteous. Righteous anger, when Jesus went in to the temple that day and was overturning the tax tables and things like that, that's righteous anger. But I'm telling each and every one of you to take a breath the next time you start to get angry. And as you exhale that breath, inhale his presence. It's an amazing thing when we take time to breathe. We allow his breath to breathe inside us and we have a spirit change. And in that spirit change, things happen. To every one of you husbands in here today, I want you to think about this. God puts you in a position of covenant leadership in your relationship. In covenant relationship, you're in a position of leadership. He puts you in that relationship to defend, to lead, and provide. He puts you in that position to stand beside of and give support. He also puts you in that position to stand behind and watch her soar, watch her fly. You need to hear that. He also did something else. He gave you a heart of humility, even though sometimes you don't use it. And I'm going to challenge, once again, I'm going to challenge every husband in here. Tonight, before you go to sleep, if you've got little jets running around, let the jets go back into their squadron. Let things get quiet. And let the Lord tell you when the right time is. And I want you to go in the kitchen and get you a pan of water, of warm water. And I want you to walk back in. I want you to kneel before your wife. And I want you to wash her feet. You won't have to say a word with your mouth. You'll say it with your eyes and you'll say it with your heart. And there's a bond that takes place in that. Jesus showed us that at the very example of the Last Supper when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords knelt and washed the disciples' feet. And in you humbling yourself, that humility will go a long ways toward a healing that needs to place, take place in many of your lives, if not all of your lives. It not only does a, a, a stanchion and a step of healing, it's a step and a stanchion of a bond, the bond between you. It's a grafting that takes place in our hearts. In Romans 8, the word of God says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. His word says nothing can separate us. And there's never a time, I don't care if it's 1 o'clock in the morning, I don't care if it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, Whatever that time is and you have a need, he's there. He's absolutely there. Amen. His word in First Chronicles 
16 says, Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his place. There are times that his peace is just so amazing. There are times when his peace is just consoling. But all the time, his peace is loving. He's a loving father. In Psalm 16, his word says this very clearly. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. A little while ago, I said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that's really the truth. No weapon. In 2 Chronicles, his word says this. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's time this morning for those things that have been on your heart, your mind, in your family In your workplace, it's time to lay them before the Lord. Not in secret, to share with a brother or sister. To bring it, and at the altar, when you bring it, bring it and lay it there. But one of the key secrets in getting rid of it is not doing what some of us do. Oh, Lord, I lay this before your throne. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. But Lord, I really do. I lay this before your throne. Oh, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. Anybody experience that? It's kind of like forgiveness. Lord, I'm laying this before your throne and ask for your forgiveness. And two days later, Lord, I'm laying it before your throne. I'm asking for your forgiveness. And if you really stop and really be quiet, he'll say this. What sin? What sin? Because he's already given you the forgiveness. And if we accept the forgiveness, two things happen. We get the forgiveness, and then he gives us the freedom not having to go back and deal with it anymore. Yes. Amen? Yes. In 2 Corinthians, his word says, Finally, brethren, rejoice. Be made complete. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. I want you to listen to that again, and I want you to receive this. Thus saith the Lord. Finally, brethren, rejoice, be made complete, be comforted, be like-minded, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. And that's my prayer for you this morning. I ask the worship team to come up, and with them, the uh, elders that are here, the pastors that are here, uh, the leaders that are here, and prepare to receive the congregation. I believe and I trust or truly do of what God showed me earlier. There are people who come to the altar today that have never come before. And have that trust and have that belief and have that faith that something's going to transpire today that hasn't transpired this last week or month or year or maybe your entire life and take his freedom and take his presence in your heart in Jesus' name. Well, we hope that this week's message blessed you. If you want to stay up to date with things going on with the river, follow us on Facebook. But if this ministry has blessed you and you would like to sow into it, there's a couple ways to do that. One is you can download our River app, which is available on the iTunes Store and the Google Play Store. Or you can go to our website, www.theriverpanhandle.com, and give that way.